Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back to Let's Play the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen, you know, I like this image right here so much. There's something weird about this room that we're in right now, where the colors are just, uh, how would how would you even, the contrast is so, so deliberate. Um, and there's a lot of weird lighting effects in the Twilight Sepulcher, but I like this a lot. So you know what I'm going to do? You guys are going to get a little uh, behind the scenes here. I'm going to... Uh, make sure there's enough room for the number in the top right there and i am going to go into system i'm going to go into settings gameplay and uh not look sensitivity display and hud opacity and turn it all the way down by the way this is just a little tip if you want to create thumbnails for videos or whatever uh there's other ways to do this obviously especially if you're on pc but i find this the easiest and that's going to be the thumbnail yeah i like that so much uh thorn looks absolutely great hopefully it comes out as good as i'm looking at it right now but it looks really 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 good okay let's um go back into settings go back into display turn that ho hud opacity all the way back up because that's some important information that we need. In the last episode, ladies and gentlemen, we were on our way to complete... I think I said gentlemen weird, and I hate when I do that, so ladies and gentlemen. We were on our way to completing the Thieves' Guild, and we will be doing that in this episode uh, if I get a move on. So let's go ahead and get a move on. We're uh, delving deep into the Twilight Sepulcher, and we're completing the Pilgrim's Path, and there's a lot of different challenges that we've done. Uh, interesting ones. I always uh, attune this, akin this, um, compare this, whatever you want to call it, to to, uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I, I forget which movie it is, but the one with uh, the one where um, Indiana Jones is dealing with the Holy Grail, and you know he has to go through all those trials and whatever. So I just really like it. Um, here we have nothing but a pit, and if we were to refer to Norris Nystrom's journal, we would get some hints here. But I happen to know that we want to just jump down into it. Ah! And now we are stuck, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing that we can do. Thorn is like, dude, how'd you get yourself in that situation? But you know what, Thorn? You're coming down here with me. I go down, we both go down or not. Okay, so yeah, I remember the last time I came here because I've completed this quest multiple times. But the last time I had no clue what I needed to do. Oh, this would be a good thumbnail too, actually, I just realized. So that's a little... Um, insight into what the skeleton key can really do and of course it's disappointing in the grand scheme of things because that's the only use that we see other than literally using it as an unbreakable lockpick which even my fucking fall oh I, I cursed dang it okay it's okay you guys have heard me curse by this point anyways uh but i try not to do it too much on youtube as you guys know but my fallout 4 character can have an unbreakable lockpick so it's not anything special I don't think, you know? But yeah, that's supposed to tell you that, oh, if you use the skeleton key, your mind can can alter things around it, you know? So yeah, that's that's the true power. That's what it's trying to show you. Okay, so we need to return the skeleton key to the Ebon Mirror, which is like the portal going to the Evergloam, which is the Daedric realm of Nocturnal. You know, it'd be awesome. Uh, okay, we're gonna run through a little fan theory one more time, because you know, I'm a fan, of course. Um, It'd be awesome if uh, so. People always ask me, "What do you want to? What do you? What do you? What do you want the plot to be in the Elder Scrolls Six? And I don't think it's going to be this, but I think it would be awesome if it was just purely religious. And I've talked about this before, but now that I'm thinking, you literally have to like, yeah. I think I said at one point, literally in the Thieves Guild, that it would be cool to go in and like slay Daedra, but just to see all of their realms because we've only seen, um, I'm forgetting what it's called. It's like Apothecaria or something like that for uh, Hermaeus Mora in the. Dragonborn DLC. We've seen um, uh, Mayrun's uh, Mayrun's Mayrun's Dagon. The Razor is his Daedric artifact. Uh, we've seen his realm in Oblivion, obviously. What else have we? Seen? I feel like oh, we've seen Cold Harbor in the Elder Scrolls Online. That's where you start out. I'm trying to think if we've seen any more. Oh, of course, the Shivering Isles. Yeah, the best one. But I think that may be it. So I'm just saying it would be interesting to get an insight into all of the other ones. Um, it's pointing me right here, and, and Thorn, if you could... Yeah, okay, so replace Skeleton Key on the Ebonmere Lock. Unfortunately, we can't really see it because Thorn is sort of messing it up, but that's okay. Oh, you know what? I have to make this the thumbnail, I think. What do we have here? In fact, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and proactively do this real quick. It's been a number of years I've set foot on your world, or perhaps it's been moments one tends to lose track. So 
Okay, guys, I know this is ruining the whole drama a bit, but I just, this is a perfect thumbnail. Anything like, anytime this sort of thing happens, it's, it's a great opportunity. Okay, getting back into it. Once again, the key has been stolen, and a champion returns to the sepulcher. Now that the Ebonmere has been restored, you stand before me awaiting your accolades. A pat on your head, a kiss on your cheek. What you fail to realize is your actions were expected and represent nothing more than the fulfillment of your agreement. Don't mistake my tone for displeasure. After all, you've obediently performed your duties to the letter. But we both know this has little to do with honor and oaths and loyalty. It's about the reward, the pride. Now you're getting it. Fear not. You'll have your trinkets, your desire for power, your hunger for wealth. I bid you to drink deeply from the Ebonmere, mortal, for this is where the Agent of Nocturnal is born. The oath has been struck, the die has been cast, and your fate awaits you in the Everglow. Farewell. Okay, we need to speak to Carlia, who of course is just trans has been transported here uh, through some form of magic. Well, obviously this is the Twilight Sepulchre, and we are its guardians, so that's not too far fetched. Um, I think the Elder Scrolls would be so much better if they just had more sequences like this, because this is something that is burned into my memory from Skyrim, you know? I, I think it's hard pressed for us to forget a scene like this, but it's rare that that happens, you know? The game sticks to its mechanics and doesn't really create assets like this all the time, and I've mentioned this before, and I'm getting really nitty gritty into like the game design uh, element, because I know why they don't do this. Obviously they have to create this whole thing from the ground up, and this is such a big game that it takes time out of other areas. But I just love this. I love everything about the Thieves Guild. I love uh, just how my favorite color is blue, and I love how it's like a dark blue. I don't even know what color you would call that, but uh, and black. It's it's just amazing. It's really cool. But let's talk to Carlia. I'm glad you were able to bring the key back safely. Nocturnal seemed quite pleased with your efforts. Pleased? She sounded indifferent. I wouldn't take that to heart. It's her way. Think of her as a scolding mother continually pushing you harder to be successful, outwardly sounding angry, but silently content. I assure you, had she been displeased with you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. What's this about becoming an agent of Nocturnal? The circles at the base of the Ebonmere imbue you with powers befitting a Nightingale agent. The crescent moon represents the agent of Shadow. The half moon for the agent of subterfuge, and the full moon for the agent of strife. Why can't I be all three? This is Nocturnal's way of maintaining balance. If you ever feel the need to change your abilities, you can return to the Sepulchre and step onto a different circle. Be warned that once you've chosen, you can't reselect for at least a day. So what now? Now, your life as a Nightingale begins. Should the need arise, you'll be summoned to the Sepulchre in order to defend it. And you? The Guild has welcomed me back with open arms. I feel like a void in my life has finally been filled. I only hope that this isn't an ending to things, but actually the beginning. The beginning of what? Why, perhaps the greatest crime spree Skyrim's ever known. There are pockets brimming with coin, and coffers overflowing with riches ripe for the picking. We may be nightingales, but in our hearts we're still thieves, and we're damn good at what we do. So I think we actually have to ask or inquire about these agents to figure out what they do. I don't think if you hover over and activate them, they actually tell you. And then once we choose one, we can't choose for another day. So it's good to pick the best one that we want. So, tell me about the Agent of Subterfuge. The Agent of Subterfuge utilizes Shadow to cloud the judgment of those around him. By weaving the darkness to their will, this Agent can manipulate others into fighting for the Nightingale for a limited time. So basically, a Fury spell, kind of. 
That would be good for a magician. Or a mage. Tell me about the Agent of Stealth. The Agent of Stealth is the master of remaining unseen. They are able to manipulate the darkness and use it to their advantage. On moonlit nights or in darkened rooms, this agent literally becomes invisible. Now, as you can probably tell, that's usually the one that I stick to, even though it's kind of redundant because we already uh, usually have 100 sneak, and amongst other things, um, including the perk on the sneak tree where you become invisible after you crouch for a split second, so it's usually not needed. Tell me about the Agent of Strife. This Agent of Strife can send forth a tendril of pure darkness into the heart of another, causing great injury to them. At the same time, this tether will bolster the Agent's own life force, making him stronger. Now that sounds good, and the subterfuge one sounds good. Stealth actually sounds good too, because we don't have high sneak, and the invisibility spell will stop after we activate something, whereas if we have the stealth, we can literally just use that as a free invisibility once a day. So they're all really good, and the rewards are really good to be redundant. Um, you, you know, I don't usually like spells and powers and whatever because I forget to use them and it's like, okay, I can only use it once a day. Highborn, however, obviously has been really, really integral into this uh, Let's Play and its success. So, the reason I'm saying all this is because I don't know which one to pick. Oh, no! Oh, I forgot it happens as soon as you step onto it. Well, we have Subterfuge. I feared I would never see you again. I was afraid you'd become like the others. If it were not for the actions of this Nightingale, your fears would have come true. He honors us all. What will you do now, my love? Nocturnal calls me to the Everglow. My contract has been fulfilled. Will I ever see you again? When your debt to Nocturnal has been paid, We'll embrace once again. Farewell, Gallus. Eyes open. Walk with the shadows. Goodbye, Carlisle. Oh, no. I was like, is he just going to disappear? Oh, that sucks. Uh, you must wait a full day before altering your... Um, Nightingale agent status. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll come back here two other times and, sh and use them and figure out which one's the best. Like I said, I think I usually pick invisibility, but let's go into magic and take a look at that. I think it's power. Nightingale subterfuge. People and creatures in the spell's area of effect will attack anyone nearby for 30 seconds. So it's sort of like a free mayhem spell. We can only use it once, obviously. But if we find ourselves in a giant fight, that would actually be really, really good, especially if we can also summon... Um, uh, Thorn, and then have him just sort of swinging at things as, as we're dealing with everything else, maybe with a fireball. So, we'll have to remember to use that. I'm going to favorite it. And now, let's leave, shall we? I totally forgot as soon as you step over one of them, that's what you pick. Um, also, as you can tell, if we come back to the Twilight Sepulchre, all we have to do is walk towards the portal. We don't have to run through the entire... Uh, dungeon again because that would be terrible 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 game design so there's only one thing left for us to do and I don't even think that we have a quest available to us so some people might just think oh that's that's the end of it in fact I may have thought that that's how it happened the uh the first time I completed the thieves guild but no of course we need to return and actually oh I I, I remember uh remember why I thought that now is because I didn't do all of the radiant quests so I came back and no one talked to me. I had no clue why. And then I had to eventually find out that, yeah, you had to restore the guild to its former glory by also doing all of Delvin and Vex's quests. But we have done all of that. Uh, so now if we return, hopefully... Hmm. So you're the one everyone's hmm. for. It's good to see you in one piece, lad. I just wanted to give you a proper thank you for everything you've done. The guild is back on its feet again and on its way to a prosperous future. What's become of the skeleton key? It's been returned to the sepulchre. That's it then. After all those years of helplessly watching the guild decline. But enough of that. I'm confident that with you in charge, 
We'll soon have more gold than we could possibly spend. So, where will you be now? I'll be down here, trying to coordinate everything with Delvin and Vex, to make sure the coin keeps flowing and no one skims. If you still feel like doing some jobs, I'm sure Delvin and Vex have more than their fair share to give out. Either way, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Here's to the future of the Guild. May it last another thousand years. Okay, now I was gonna say that's not a good sign. Because he didn't talk about becoming the Guildmaster, but obviously we, we've immediately gotten another quest here. Under new management, speak to Brynjolf about becoming the new Guildmaster. Well, my friend, the time's come to make it official. It's time to become our Guildmaster. Don't worry. I promise this will be short and sweet. If you'll just meet us in the center of the system, we can begin. Then why are you walking over there, my friend? Proceed to the center of the cistern. I think everybody was just teleported there automatically. Now we just need to wait for Brynjolf's slow ass. He started talking to us about becoming the guild master, and then he walks in the complete opposite direction of the middle. What in the world? Video games. Oh, Sapphire. Yeah, just walk through the, the, the coronation. Yeah, that's fine. Look. I've never been good at these things, so I'm just going to keep it short. Being Guildmaster means more than just getting a cut of all the loot. It's about being a leader and keeping this raveling. With that in mind, I propose that the position of Guildmaster should be yours. Delvin? Agree. Vex? Sure. Why not? Carlia? Absolutely. Everyone is in agreement. So all I can do now is name you Guildmaster, and wish you good fortune and long life. Now everyone, get back to work. So now the pupil is the master, eh? Good shot. You need anything, anything at all, don't hesitate to ask. How's the guild doing? Take a good look around you. Have you ever seen the guild in such a prosperous state? With Mercer Fregon and our influence spreading across Skyrim, the guild's earned a new level of respect it hasn't seen in decades. I couldn't be more proud to be part of the Thieves' Guild, or its new guildmaster. So that's it? There's nothing else to it? Well, that's it. Sorry if it isn't the ceremony you were hoping for, but we're not exactly known for throwing our coin around. After we're done, head over to Tunelia, and she'll set you up with your guildmaster armor. Oh, and one last thing. Here. I want you to take this. It's sort of a tradition around here. The Amulet of Articulation was given to me. And we also need to retrieve your guild leader armor from Tanilia. I've thought that her name was Tanilla this entire time. I don't know why. Obviously, I've heard Brynjolf pronounce her name at certain points. Let's take a look at that, uh, the talisman. I just, I totally forgot what it was called at the moment. It was called the Amulet of Articulation. Right. Persuade checks and dialogue will almost always succeed. And Speechcraft is 15% better. That's actually really, 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 really good. Is it better than the Galdur Amulet? Now, that's a question you have to ask yourself. Probably not, considering the Galdur Amulet is basically like nine free levels. Um, but this is so good. Well, obviously, we can just equip it every time we need to pers uh, persuade somebody. The issue is that with Adronach, I, I want to mostly stick to Intimidation. But I remember using this for a while. Um, yeah, this is a really good, really good uh, amulet. And also, it's unique looking, which is always nice. Let's head over to Tanilia and get that Guildmaster armor. Nice Before drink there. That didn't business, even enter I've your mouth. Something I need you to do. Sure. What do you need? Well, as you know, the guild's growing and things are looking up around here. The only thing we're lacking is a reliable way to transport our merchandise across Skyrim. How can I help? I'm not sure if you've noticed, but there are several Khajiit caravans that travel across the realm. They're shrewd traders and don't mind getting their hands dirty. I've bartered with their leader, Rasad, on more than one occasion. You want me to go talk to Rasad? Actually, I want you to bring him something. You see, the caravans are notorious for transporting illegal substances. 
Present Rasad with the satchel of moon sugar, and I bet my last septum he'll make a deal. Brynjolf said you had something for me. Yes, and I'm more than happy to give it to you. I mean, look at this place. I've never seen so much wealth down here. You've made us all rich. Here you go. Should fit you like a glove, boss. Finally, some respect from Tanilia. Okay. So, the final quest for the Thieves Guild, Thieves Guild has been completed. Let's take a look at our Guildmaster stuff. Unfortunately, we're not going to be wearing it, but still need to take a look at it. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's the same exact armor look-wise. Is look-wise a word? I don't know, but it looks exactly the same as the normal Thieves Guild stuff, but it's the... The, you know, the Thieves Guild Master stuff. And, and I never even wore this stuff when I was playing uh, Sneaky Thief characters or whatever because the Nightingale stuff is just so much cooler anyways. And I'm all about fashion, like in Dark Souls, fashion souls over actual uh, practicality. But Guild Master's armor carrying capacity increased by 50 points. That's not bad. Guild Master's boots, pickpocket success is 35% better. That's not bad. That's actually really good. Uh, Guild Master's gloves, lock picking is 35% easier. Not bad either. Guild Master's hood, prices are 20% better. Uh, if the hood was something related to combat, I think this would be like the absolute perfect set for a thief. Unfortunately, we've already got our mage set, so we'll not be wearing it, like I said, but that's quite all right. Now, there's still, uh, I think, three things that we need to do with the Thieves' Guild, but this is probably still going to be the Thieves' Guild finale. Not sure if I'm going to do all this stuff in the next episode, or try to do some of the stuff in this episode, or what, but one of the things that we need to do is grab all of the Stones of Baron Zaya, and that's going to be difficult, because I need to actually look where those are, because I've forgotten, and uh, yeah, we need to find like all 21 or 24, and then turn those in, because that's actually a Thieves' Guild quest. Um, we also, I, I'm saying that I'm going to go ahead and find all of the unique Thieves Guild stuff, like the left eye of the Falmer, or right eye, or whatever it was, uh, because, yeah, it's unique, and, you know, I think that ties into sort of the same thing with all of the Dragon Priest masks in getting 100%, so we will be doing that as well, and then also we have this, I believe, miscellaneous quest to, uh, deliver Moon Sugar to Rasad. Now, I don't think this one is going to be too difficult or long, and this is pretty much the last one that we are able to do um, without me having to research where stuff is, where the Stones of Baron Zaya are, and where the uh, unique stuff is. And also, if you weren't aware, all of the unique stuff goes over here uh, behind this desk. You can see we have the Bust of the Great Fox, and we can take it too. Uh, the Left Eye of the Falmer. Um, we have Ornate Drinking Glass and Hunting Brew Decanter. And, uh, yeah, you, basically it just fills this up with all of the unique stuff. I don't understand it either. They were a sure thing, I swear. You just better hope this one isn't another waste of my coin. That's so funny that they would put the same voice actor as Mercer Frey, literally, like, like, what if Mercer Frey was standing? Yeah, this guy might only something. appear after you become Guildmaster or closer to the end of the... Thieves Guild, I'm not sure, but imagine if Mercer's standing here and this dude is standing right here. And they're literally, they literally have the same exact voice. I don't know. Anyways, um, I thought there was something, too, in regards to a... Yeah, Guildmaster's Tribute Chest. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So every now and then you can um, open this because we have the tribute key, obviously, and grab all the stuff inside. We're going to take the gold, we're going to leave the sapphire, but it's a nice little bonus, too. I I've always thought it was odd how they don't really explain everything that you can do in the Thieves' Guild at the end. They don't explain the tribute chest, I don't think. Uh, and everything is just sort of, oh, you're, you're Guildmaster now. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then they don't, they don't explain that, you know, you need to... Uh, complete all the Radiant quests to fully complete the Thieves' Guild. And I had no clue when I first played this game, and, you know, the, the wealth of information wasn't there online because everybody got it at the same time. I had no clue that, um, you know, I needed to do that until much later on. So Rasad should be right over here. What's funny is I'm pretty sure we've attacked Rasad at some point. Uh, I remember specifically there was a giant or something, and we needed to kill a uh, certain Khajiit in uh, the caravan. So it looks like he's cool with that. Oh my god. Every time... Uh, dragons just appear every time and ruin everything. That's okay. We've still got some time in this episode. Let's take this thing down as fast as possible. Rasad cannot die, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he was the one that didn't die. Um when we were fighting the dragon or whatever it was. But this is a blood dragon, which means it's gonna be a little bit tougher than usual. I think we all know at this point. 
But luckily we do have some helpful cats here to help us out, including Rasad. And what is your name? Jadathar. Okay. So it's always pretty much just delaying the inevitable with dragons. You know, they're going to die. Did that arrow hit? I think it did. That was a good shot. I don't want to hit any guards because I know with my luck I'll fling an arrow and guard will get hit right in the face and his guard his guard friend will have absolute best the best vision of all time and see me and go, it was him! That man needs to go to jail. And I like to imagine that's how the game works. All right, I just need Rasad to be close to me and there he is. And, uh... Where are you? Okay. Dragon's just somewhere over there in the distance. And it's not going to let me talk to Ras uh, Rasad unless it's just gone. These guys are chasing. You approach as if you know us, stranger. Who are you and what do you want? I bring an offer from the Thieves Guild. Yes, I've heard the guild is rising back to power. An alliance would be most beneficial to both parties. I will consider the offer, but I'll have to discuss it with the other caravans. Perhaps this will sweeten the deal. Ah, we show that. I could smell it anyway. I am pleased with this offer, and accept. Take my word to the leaders of your guild, and tell them we look forward to a prosperous and profitable future. If you happen upon any of our caravans in your travels, we'd also be more than willing to pay you a fair sum for any of your stolen goods. Just some moon sugar. And that's all it takes. Give my regards to the and of course they took down the dragon as we were having a nice little friendly chat with Rasad there. Let's grab its gold, its arrows. And I think we still, yes, we have to return to Tanilia. So we will do that and then we will end the Thieves Guild with a nice little bow. Of course, like I said, there's still two things we're going to be doing for the Thieves Guild. But um, we will be finding more Stones of Baron Zaya along the way including in the Companions Guild, if I remember right, there is a Stone of Baron Zaya. There's pretty much one in every main thing. Um, there was one in the Archmage's Quarters, right? There had to be, that or the Arcanium. So yeah, they're, they're just spread out, you know, over stuff that you're more than likely going to see, and obviously some, there are like 24, are just in places that you actually have to find. So we're not going to be doing that. I'm just going to probably maybe grind all those out or just wait till near the end of the Let's Play. I'm not sure yet. Maybe do it on stream, sort of. That's another grindy Sorry, thing. Lad. Important things to do. We'll Welcome to the cozy little family. I'm one of the lookouts for the guild. I watch Delvin's back. Yeah, we've we've spoke before. I've struck a deal with Rasad. Yeah, good. I'll contact some of my people and have them prepare some shipments right away. Good job. Here. Let me give you something for all the legwork. Six hundred gold, and that's about until next it. time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this episode. We have completed the Thieves Guild as much as I want to complete it. We will be completing it in completion, but there's a lot more to the Thieves Guild than there is in every other guild. So. You guys should know how it goes. But uh, we will be completing the Stones of Baron Zaya quest, and we will be grabbing all of the unique things. As long as I didn't lock myself out of them. Hopefully I didn't. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. In the next episode, we will move on to something completely different. And I will see you guys there. Bye-bye.